Easter Sunday is often recognised as the time of the resurrection and some drivers definitely the resurrection in their championship hopes. And that's exactly what they'll be hoping to do here, of course, at the Hungara Ring in Hungary for LCR round 10 of our 18 round season. The brilliant 14 corner circuit with two DRS activation zones for the drivers to take advantage of. Let's have a look at just a few minutes ago, we had a gripping and epic qualifying session and here is your grid for it. So T10 Amaze gets another pole position in his books, but is the only man inside the top 10 on the soft compound tyres and the championship leader is right alongside him in P2. Row 2 is also Mercedes followed by Renault as well with Dralex out qualifying Sirius teammate in DTO Felipe. Then looking down to row 3 it is Jolly who lines up at the head of that one with WR Clone Troop in 6th and again it's the same with the Mercedes and Renault crew it is also a McLaren Toro Rosso two rows as well with LK out qualifying Crescito to make it in that order. Finally on row 5 rounding outside the top 10 we have KJ Gamer in the Williams and Sims in the Red Bull and then looking outside the top 10 and fresh was the is looking to row six. Earl Tibble lines up at 11th for Shizu Vivid in 12th. Bragg is a strong qualifying with 13th for VSR GC alongside him in 14th. Matt 2 on 2 makes it 15th on the 8th row with Boris Letterbox alongside him in 16th. And then looking back to row number 8, you've got sorry, row number 9, you've got John Pat followed by LCR Apex. On the lone row 10 at the back of the field by himself is the Dutchman of LCR Mulder. Basically, the drivers are thick and fast on the formation of that. My name, of course, is LCR. I hear the voice of LCR pledging the action as per usual. Alongside me, the man, the myth, the legend in F1, Ben. And Ben, what about that qualifying? It was fairly dominant at the front, but towards the mid pack, it looked very close. I think you've just got me up there perfectly. Yes, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, amazing to get a pole position on the soft tyres. It's a bold call for me, straight away. I can't say anything else. It's a very bold call. But, looking on the skies, and looking on the grid, this might get interesting very quickly. I think there's a possible chance of rain. Now, I've not read anything that confirms a dry race. I probably should have done. Um, but, I'm trying to keep it as a surprise for myself, but I think there's a genuine chance we might have rain here today. Looking at the field, we saw Jolly, Clone Troop, LK, all those guys getting really close to the mid pack. But I think this race is going to be a Maze versus Sierra. It depends on how much of a gap the Maze can pull early on in those soft tyres, and if they don't just drop off to 90 in about two laps. Well, we could see a bit of teammate gamesmanship here with Mercedes and Renault entirely locking out the front two rows, and Toro Rosso and McLaren entirely rocking out rows three and row four at the moment it could be very much a game of teamsmanship throughout this grand prix but here at hungary it's not exactly been the staple of an lcr calendar but here in an 18 round season why not have a better ch chance to bring a revelation in your championship hopes the final few guys get ready to park up on the grid as lcr gets ready to create its legacy here in hungary we get ready for the five red lights which are about to come on as we are prepared we've got one Two, three, four, five for lights and LCR season eight is off in Hungary. Good start there from the base. Good start as well from Jolly on the second on the third row. Coming up to the Felipe down towards turn one. As you can see, also there looks as if Jolly has got a pretty cool start. And Jolly is down the inside. We might have two cars down towards turn one. Felipe and Slime Bond is also well came. Clone Troop trying to battle away as well. Crescito on the outside of KJ Gamer, but just about coming up towards turn one. It still remains amazing. Lead Sierra second. Jolly just about holding on to third, but round the outside goes Antonio Rosso. Still Crescito now in the fifth. Tibble up in the seventh from 11th on the grid. Felipe falling down the order faster than you can say the word fast. Now coming down towards turn three. Felipe holds on to eighth just about but on the hill climb towards turn four it's amazingly seven second Jolly third jolly and crochet make it four five contact the torosso but what happened there and it has been contact and it's vivid that's off at the exit of turn four yeah contact vivid, vivid in dc go through but a bit further up there's a bit more contact as well between clone troop and um felipe and lk they all came together by lk falling down the hill as well the super clarence definitely came together from where i'm sitting but a great start from Amaze, nearly already breaking the Jerez for Sarah. Looking behind, Cage gets cleared, GC up in P11. It's all getting pretty dicey. It's LK down the side of Sims for P9 and makes the move and gets the move to the Frenchman. So already starting to see positions moving about. The two Toros is having a cracking start. Just what they needed, really. From, from as you see, 5th and 8th to 4th and 5th on the very first lap. And that's a good foundation for the rest of their race. As Amaze finishes the first lap and goes faster than all after leading by one second now over Syrah. So what he needs to do, continue to bolt in these laps. I'm sure Syrah is looking to just keep that consistency. But I'm sure on lap 3 of the DRS enabled, I'm sure Dralax is going to fancy an opportunity at getting past 
the Brazilian at the moment, but still remains having a fairly big conga line falling down the field as John Pat is trying to go around the outside of VRC GC, who is on the hard compound tyres. GC very much leaves way, but KJ is also flying up in 11th place. He's now on the back of Sims, who's just been passed by LK. And currently, we know how quick KJ can be, but wasn't the ideal start for him. Started 9th, now down to 11th, but he's still in the race, which is crucial. Yeah, d -ball almost spinning out. GC's had another action down to turn 4. That part of side with, with Apex. GC just lets Apex go through, no risk. Season 1 champ clearing Season 8 rookie. Oh. Good way to start with that. I like that. I like that. I might, I might nick that sometime. Well, there's plenty of rookies on the grid for you to work with. But, unfortunately, Apex doesn't make that many overtakes, so... It's kind of oh, 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 hello. Meanwhile, Amaze has made a mistake. He's lost oh, seven tenths. So he goes Sira to the inside, coming out towards the final corner, trying to get the better one out of the two. Bit of a sort of moment there as Amaze gets himself back going. But now with the DRS enabled, Faster actually goes to Dralex at the back of this train, but down towards turn one, Sira is very much keeping Amaze on his toes. Sira is Siraing. <laughs> Still not a good way of putting it. As KJ uh, gets past Sims down to one, and Brad gets past Matt. From over there, uh, from Bench. Uh, KJ just cleared Sims as well, so a bit more day, but Sierra is looking racy right now. Brazilian five on the bounce, seven wins this season. The other two, well, he put it in the wall. So for him, it's been a great start of the season, but he hasn't really moved on from there. Deep boys hounding the back of Clone Troop P6 to P7, which is very good to see. Don't forget, he's on the hearts. Tibble's on the mm -hmm. hearts. These lot are all on mediums, and, and he is currently by far the, the, the highest hard run. Put it this way, John Pat down in 12th is the next one, and he's in 7th. So there's five cars between them, so he's doing a brilliant job currently to manage that. I mean, he's only got a second gap to between Clone Troop and Kushito as well, and then over about nine tenths. But you do wonder here. He's amazed, doing his team a bit of a favour here to give himself a bit of a pop, but with DRS enabled, you think this might be the move for the race lead and maybe even the race win further down the line. Down towards turn one, DRS open, picks his spot, goes to the outside, does the Brazilian. Long way round, the two championship protagonists collide here in Hungary. Second of the bite of the cherry for Sira. Now coming down towards oh, turn two, accident. he's still got his nose in. And just about down towards turn two. And Mate has dropped it at the exit of turn two, he's in the wall. Tralex goes past, Jolly and Kushito both get past. And that is not how he wanted it, but what about the contact further down? Yeah, um, I think I think it wasn't, it wasn't that worth it to be honest, but yeah, it was quite a Oh, Kushito, the two Torosos are to come together! At turn oh, five! What did Kushito do? Kushito oh. went to the outside line! Felipe hits him! Back on the track! Now there's like KJ! KJ's trying to get past LK, he backs out of it, LK hits Felipe! The two guys battle out of the championship, KJ gets through, Sims is now past LK as well! Jesus! <laughs> Something to speak at the moment! More and more action, the two Torosos! Probably came together. Well, he goes clone. Oh, clone trick fought back the inside line. They're one amazed at the at turn number two. And this is still going on, by the way. It is still yes. happening. We'll have to keep going as if nothing's going on. But that's an absolute conga line behind T10. Amazed. He's into the pits. Into the pits goes. And yeah, I think that adds somewhat because he did put the wall at turn two in that accident. The dearest advantage. Now for Clone Trip, he has actually got the opportunity to sort of mount a bit of a holding guard. But now down towards turn one, I'm oh, sure Tibble breaks late. it massively oh. late around the outside. That is far too late. Kushito might punish him. KJ also very much in the midst of Felipe as well. They're side by side and side by side. Two way battles coming down towards turn two. Kushito trying to get the switch back on Tibble. Now coming up towards turn three. There's also Sims very much trying to find the way around the outside of KJ. Through towards three. Kushito off onto the gravel a little bit. Still getting himself going out on the hill climb towards four. Got an illegal overtake. Had to back off. Slots in just about before Felipe could take opportunity and breathe. I had to look at my phone there. I was just I was just relying on you to get everything, but Jesus. What what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards, roughly. All in one giant conga line. Or trainer lane. Whatever you want to, or whatever you want to call it. This is ridiculous. Look at what this is doing for the gap between Clone Trip and Jolly. 4.1 seconds that is out. If anything, 
a clone trooper is helping Syra, Jol Syra, Alex, and Jolly. Because one thing they don't want to be doing is coming out right behind Syra or Drumpad. Both of these two are the hard tires. They get, they're going a while. They're going to like 20, they're going 20, 20, 24 laps. I mean, you can, you can get on the you can get on the soft square here from from the hards. So do not rule these guys out. Oh, Felipe! Oh, oh Rashida against Felipe oh, yeah. at turn one. He stuck his nose in and has very much kept himself more or less in as well. Coming on towards turn two, bit of a massive shunt there. Heading through towards turn two now. Felipe Yay! is forced to go defensive. He's been in contact there. It's Cajun trying to get himself involved as well. Absolute carnage battle here for sixth place. These three are very much battles for the top contenders, in my opinion. And putting on a fight here in the mid pack. Grishito snaps the back end, gets turn four right. Felipe a bit conservative. And somehow they still remain as they are. Oh my god, Crescito, that corner cut. I'd be filing a lawsuit for that corner cut. That was absolutely ridiculous. What's happened to John Pat? Uh oh. He's found a part he's found undiscovered territory. He's got he's got massive front wing damage as well. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's probably good news for the media runners because he was doing fairly well on them hard, so for them a bit reprieve now of knowing he's... that there's only really one hard runner in the scrap. Probably for the best. Yeah, I mean, obviously you've got more than Matt, Apex, GC, and yeah, you've got those four running at the back. But the main one, the GST team obviously up in P5. Speaking of, speaking of the devil, and he shall appear very, very close to the back of Clone Trooper there. Of course, Tebow had that phenomenal battle with Syrah in, in Britain. So we know he can definitely race. Right, no, I wasn't. I was I was unavailable, unfortunately, due to yeah. some work commitments, which is a shame because I absolutely love Quintana Britain. In fact, I'm really looking forward to next week as well, we travel to Belgium. That's always a classic oh. in LCR, the Belgian yeah. Grand Prix. In fact, it's always a classic in league well. racing. Um, in fact, the one you would know. Well, one of the best races season I've ever on, I think, was LCR well, Season 5. Yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant to watch. Uh, anyway, back to the hero now, back to season 8 at Hungary. D entirely different circuit, an entirely different country at the moment. Um, well. K the battle here between Shito, Felipe, KJ, Sims and LK still sort of rage on a little bit, but KJ got close to Felipe, but now he seems to have got away in that second sector. And you do mm -hmm. wonder, is Tyler going to play an effect in the next few laps? I've just been literally nosing through people's tyres. It seems like... Ralex, out of everybody, is really keeping his tyres in very good condition. The guys who are stuck in this train, I'm always starting to see a lot of abrasion, especially on Felipe's front left. Already oh, hello. To look a little bit unhealthy as here comes Steamboat. To the outside, closure, giving the Verstappen. To be fair, he, he picked the outside line it's as Sarah zero. gets an early time penalty. As and he that... breaks three seconds to Dralex. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of ironic, isn't it? Really, I just yeah. to, I think he's just flexing his power a bit there. Oh, I'm three seconds. Oh, I'll just go three seconds ahead now, shall I? I'll, yeah. I'll, just, I'll just turn it up ever so slightly. Yeah. Which is, um, um, I was like, yeah, I'll just dominate the race some more instead of you know giving us some good action. Oh, and meanwhile, LK passes Sims there in the second sector. Obviously, Ooh. Sims made some sort of mistake and he's dropped back now. And uh, okay, now a bit of a gap bridge there between himself and Cage. Of course, as we mentioned in qualifying, two championship rivals at the moment between them two, one point separating them in the battle for sort of very much mid pack supremacy. I'm going to use that more than once from now on. I love that. Uh, now around the penultimate corner, Clone Troop and Tibble again. And you do wonder, Clone Troop's obviously not been the quickest out of this train here with himself and Crescito. Does that present an opportunity for the Frenchman to go at his fellow Frenchman in the coming laps? Well, possibly so. Possibly it's possibly. Uh... Tibo's signing it! Oh! Into turn one. It's fairly late, but he's got the move done. He had a feeling that was going pretty soon. Now, Tibo is just just over 10 seconds behind Sira. Sira's definitely, at the moment, actually, if I was Sira, I wouldn't even think about it. Because at the moment, he's going to come out right in the back of this train. And obviously, these guys will be coming in as well. But that's still not what he wants. Especially if he comes in early. As a Boris is requesting the invite back in the chat. Sorry, we got invited. Oh, whoops. 
I actually, I actually have a message from him, so I don't apologise for that. I don't actually see the message. Um, he actually sent me a message about six minutes ago asking for an invite. Um, I was obviously too busy talking about something to notice, so apologies for that, Boris. That was probably my fault, really. Um, meanwhile, at the front of the race, zero three and a half seconds clear of Dralex, and Dralex has broken the DRS to Jolly. As there's a yellow flag in sectors two and three, and I believe it's Sims that has lost it. Yes, he has. That is the exit of turn ten uh, that you are seeing. So. Is not at all what he would have wanted on that million tyres. He's getting towards the end of his pit stop and he's got a massive chunk of wing missing on that left hand side. Um, so he's going to have to pit for a new front wing and probably go on to the hards to the end now, which you can do. So it's not as if he's out of the story. Meanwhile, the only man that actually chose to go on hards outside the top 10, uh, Brad, has pit now and I imagine he's going on to hards as well for Ferrari. Um, yes, he's actually, yes, he is. He's going on to hard tyres. Sims also in. But that's also for hard tyres. The strategy around here, quite a mute really. The hard tyres just go however long you want them to, really. Yeah, it's... To be honest, the, the soft to hards isn't a bad idea. It's just, it just really depends on how quickly your hards warm up. Well, I'll, I'll tell you now. I mean, last season it was a, it was a carnage race. And there was about three safety cars, I think, in, in OCR. From what I can remember. And I, I pit on lap three and I took cards to the end. But yeah, we'll just, just with, because with the added bonus of safety car, it kind of kind of makes sense. But you, you could still go from like lap eight, lap nine, really, to the end. So there's not really a, a sense of urgency about the tyres. But meanwhile, Rashito's dropped back to Clone Tree. He's lost the DRS, and now Felipe and John uh, and KJ are closing up. Despite the fact this is very much a a street circuit style circuit, this is not actually a street circuit as such, but you know, it's, it's built like one with the narrow sort of corners. Um, once you do break DRS though around here, it's very difficult to get it back sometimes. Certainly so, I mean, um, as we've seen, as we, well as we saw in qualifying, it's such fine margins on on a lap around here, it's a couple of tenths if that. If you're only gaining like a tenth or so a lap, and you're like 1.6, that's six laps. You're not going to have DRS for. Obviously, the second you're in DRS, you're pretty much going to gain like five tenths of that because it's ridiculously OP. But if you fall out of that one second, you're practically screwed, to be honest. There's still a long way to go. Lap 11 of 35 oh, was Apex gets a free set time penalty. Do you know what? I, I thought that was going to be. Oh, speaking of which, Apex has lost it. Extra the term four finds another victim. Um, Both of them also involved in that? Yeah, both of them went off. DC is just sort of going again, uh, a little bit of the road, but both of them were off at very similar places. I don't see any damage on either one of them's cars, but they both went off at turn five. Yes, meanwhile, here comes Crescito on clone trip. He's massively closed up to the back of the McLaren, and now this is an opportunity for him to really much strike. Picks up the DRS now, hasn't really got any DRS to work with, as you can see, barely in the 10% of it, but now down towards one with the opportunity of drive reduction system, goes left and right, clone troop goes back to his line under the braking, and that stopped the opportunity for a lunge, exit the turn one, Krishita very much on the kerb, uh, got a bit of sort of oversteer, but now down towards two, breaks late, tries to sort of psych clone troop out, clone troop's not having any of that, of course the title contender back in season five actually led the championship heading into the Christmas break after last week's race at Hockenheim, um, he actually led after that one, but for now, uh, he's currently holding on to fifth ahead of the Frenchman, but still, you've also got KJ and Philippe, they're still in the midst. So, so it's, all still, it's all still around, a little bit of luck up with Zito, who is mounting Ooh. those curves. OMG, it's Joe style. How is he not getting a penalty? It, it, that chicane is so unbalanced. It, in, in time travel qualifying, it's stupidly tight margin. In the race, it's a free for all, unfortunately. I knew you could cut it because I'd done that to win a league race. Yeah. But no one actually knew about it in, in that league. And I just did it and I won by so much. And a bloke actually sent a steward in because I kept cutting his corners. And they said, well, What can we do about it? But that, that, that was a story for another day. Uh, but yeah, I just kept watching him cut these. And I think I didn't even cut them that much. As into the pits comes Felipe, first of the train to make the call. It's pretty early, I'd say. Oh, Crescito! Lunges at turn one, 
clone troop has just very much seen double. He's wondering if it's in deja vu because it's exactly the same as what Tibor done. Except this time, clone troop's kept his nose in and towards two. Bit of a contact between the two. Now coming towards turn number three. Krishita on the curve. Bit of a nudge. More nudging. Now goes on to the runoff. Does clone troop. Now the hill climb towards turn four. Who's going to keep their nose in? They both try to. Krishita's done a switchback. Heading up towards turn five. Around the outside goes the Frenchman. At the most unlikely of corners. Krishita's in the fifth. That's the only way I've got to describe that. He's now gone deep. And he's got away with that. <laughs> uh, that's the only way I can describe that with a round of applause. Phenomenal move there from the Frenchman. He's got four seconds in front of Debol, who he's catching Jolly. Which is interesting. I mean, just see if any of these guys do decide to bolt in this lap. None of the top three have decided to come in. Um, I, I'm just, nobody to be fair looks like they've got severe degradation. As KJ and Crusito do decide to come in. Anybody else deciding that it's a good idea to come in? Don't think so. Uh, also, judging by the loss from Crusito, uh, um, from Felipe, I think Stira is now going to come out in front of Mulder, which is really useful for him. I think he even might even be in front of LK when he comes in. Which would be extremely useful for him. So if see if comes is out, undercut the pair of them. Yeah. So Felipe has to be in front of Grisito and KJ by a very good margin actually. He's got full second on them. But that that makes you wonder, was that related to the battle we saw between Clone Troop and Grisito just the lap before? Because they were battling very heavily, and that presented an opportunity for Felipe to get that even further ahead, and that could have been the second that he lost by going side by side at turn four. As the leader's in. Race leader, Biral Syrah comes into the pits. So I think he is going to come out in front of Mulder. We'll see. Dolly also comes into the pits. Clone Troop, I think, about to fall, but that's about a net P8, P9. That battle with a lot of KJ for penalty as well. And yeah, Sarah is easily clear. He's easy for an LK in fact as well. Sarah comes out in P3. Is it? What about Jolly? He's got yeah. a few cars coming up. He's going to come out behind Matt and Mulder, who are currently in the battle for the, the hard run of supremacy, if you will. Uh, and now. Jolly's going to come out as you've got GC under threat from Felipe down towards turn one. Down the inside goes the Brazilian. Wow. And fully takes opportunity of the fresher tyres as well. I think really GC sort of let him go, understood the nature of the Clone business. Really. The back. And he is. It goes to show how crucial an undercut is around here. Yellow flag in sector two. Okay. Is that for. I it thought is. for a second it was Sarah. I'll be honest. I looked. I looked to the minimap first and I pulled a line. So I thought it was yellow. Not orange. I. <laughs> I if I'd been. Well, Sarah, that is a that's a very easy mistake. It's not like as if it's like red and grey. It's it's a very easy thing to sort of understand. As meanwhile, speaking of silver as well, into the pits comes uh, Dralex, but Kushito has just lost two positions. Oh, and uh, Felipe! Whoa, he actually saved that. Fair enough to him. Okay, he's in the Okay, he's back on the wall. LK he's had a torrid one here today. He probably had to provide probably would be surprised if he just retires in the pit lane. He has had a torrid race. As uh, who was it who came to the pit? Dralex, wasn't it? Yeah. Dralex has come out seven point three behind Sarah, but crucially he's in front of the mold of Matt battle. Which now has a wild jolly on his arse. As KJ gets past G C. But G C decides to know what? I'm end up about that many people today. There's a little scrap. KJ gets through. Blocks him entirely. All dots P8. And GC can get a run here. Might even have a go. Bit behind. Clone Troop has got to the inside. He's going to be the most angriest here. He's now got, he's now got a deal with GC while KJ decides to sod off like the wet wipe he is. 
Oh, <laughs> so there goes Clone Troop to the inside of the chicane of all corners. Squeezes GC out and gets past Rashito, then completely butchers it again. Now coming up towards the exit of that section. And just about, GC is still ahead of the Frenchman, but some balls driving there from the McLaren. Crescito! Oh, there's a front wing gone. And that was Crescito's. As I think it was really GC that just got a bit of a slower exit. I'm probably sure Crescito was expecting. And then had no choice but to lunge it and picked up damage as a result. Meanwhile, Jolly is going to dispatch of Matt heading down towards turn one. Matt, of course, still on them a lot more used hard compound tyres and I'm sure Jolly is now going to fancy trying to get past Mulder by the end of next lap. Yeah, there goes, um, there goes Kate Crescito, or maybe not, GC is uh, defending pretty hard here. We've known this. There has been supposedly some beef between BMG and uh, Crescito over the last couple of days, so, not well, the last couple of months really, to be fair. Ah, yeah. It's a three-second time penalty. Does the does the Frenchman for running wide at turn three, and then GC eventually slots in behind the bush. has now got massive front wing damage, so that might hinder him for the remainder of the race. But meanwhile, Jolly is right on the back of Mulder here through the second sector, and of course he can't That's get past. The crucial thing, it, it, the crucial thing for someone like this though is to not get frustrated. You've got to keep your calm here because the opportunity will come. Fresher tyres. Sims is coming for another stop, by the way. He's down in 18th place. I'm not Eek. having a good Grand Prix at all. Through towards the final corner, and this should be the opportunity Jolly awaits for. Round the final corner. Get to the DRS now. There's no DRS for Mulder. Second bite of the chair as well if he needs it. Down towards turn one. Down the inside goes Jolly, and surely he'll have the move done on the exit of turn one, if not by the end of turn two. Fires his way past. Oh. Matt is still in the hunt as well. Just about Jolly now into fourth and 4.4 seconds now behind Dralex. Must have a bit of time to him, but realistically, Dralex was beginning to pull away from the Torosso anyway. He was, to be fair. Um, uh, my, my cat's the most annoying thing in the world. I'm just going to have that statement for the rest of eternity now. Um, I'm trying to just spring one off my knee and it really bloody hurt. Um, but, I don't know about my trials and tribulations. Uh, back to the action, so Sims has just left the section, his race has been, well, horrid, he's not even a word anymore. Uh, Boris in the pit lane, it seems to quiet down here a little bit, then we're about to try to with GT and Maze. Maze has had a, well, a race. Describe it as that. GC just shifts. No, no real point of battling him. Mulder just about to fall out of the rest of the jolly drop. Back to fall out of the battle of him. It's quietened down a little bit. Uh, it's almost too quiet at the moment. Mulder's in. Elsie Mulder picked laps. Lap number 19 is his lap to decide to come into the pits. And for his one and only stop onto the medium compound tyres. On he goes, lovely. And they're sailing on past his way. A good pit stop by the Red Bull team. And let's see where he funnels out, of course, as Apex is in his stop as long as GC as well. Uh, Mulder actually going to come out, I imagine, ahead of Vivid and has plenty of time. There's five seconds penalty for Apex for speeding in the pit lane. And Mulder now only got about four, five seconds to amaze their heads and there's a few hard runners up in front. He can still get a, a strong points finish at this rate. Yeah. Um, I won't rule out possible P8, P7 maybe. Um about his current position. So Trippin and KJ the only real two guys out on the track together. There's actually a blue flag in front for them for some reason. Which is not good. Yeah, Job Papp and Boris are currently providing some not very AT entertainment as yeah the race leader. Here at the T-Bolt comes into the pit. We more than likely he should he should clear Matt. I don't think he's I think he might even Play jolly here. Matt's, Matt's crashed in the pit and makes it. <laughs> Matt has had a torrid entrance to the pits there. Jolly yeah. is going to come out just about ahead, but Tibble now on mediums. He can hunt down the Toro Rosso, and you have to say that stint on the hards has been an excellent stint for him. After starting P11, now in P4, and only two seconds behind the man in front, I wouldn't discount Sarah for a chance at P. Uh, sorry for Tibble for a chance at P2 here. Possibly so. 
amazing comeback for the as Kate as Coach of Cage is about to rekindle a little friendship between these two. Uh, get together a couple of times, these guys. Uh, so, so let's hope none of that today. Uh, a note on Sims why he's had got Torrey had his pad kit disconnected, so that's why he has decided to leave the race instead of being a instead of killing the entire field with the adventure controller. I mean, it's a little bit loose. Because Crescito decided that's not a chicane. Again. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit much the corner cutting, isn't it? I mean to mm. an extent. I mean when, when I did WRT1, we were told to monitor it. By monitor, I mean if somebody does it, call it out on them. Now, so I'm kind of naturally inclined to do that, but at the same time, we can kind of all admit we've done it ourselves, so... Hypocrisy? Question mark? <laughs> I think that's the main thing about Yeah, this. I think it's one of them things, in it, where you complain about it if... If it's done against you, but if it's done, if you do it, you're like, oh, well, we can do it, so why not? I suppose. But um, we'd like to point out the skies have actually held, despite the despite the prediction of rain. Meanwhile, Timor has got past Jolly at turn four. I think the Tauros have let him go there, really. Smart decision you could have made. Uh, I'm just going to read out what Sim said uh, in in the chat, and please be allowed to laugh. Uh, he just put this track cures insomnia. <laughs> That's a very good way of looking at it. Yes, Crescito finally has a penalty for his interesting ways of quarters. Hey, he's uh, second he's... actually today. Did he turn? It's his second. He yeah, is, his second. Oh. His second one. Uh, and actually, the only one out of the entire top five that has a penalty is the race leader as well. But he's also got a 9.7 second lead. Yeah. So, you know, small gains, small gains. Siri is Siri, as I said earlier. As a he... passes Crescito. Was that? Did he get past at turn 10? Uh, I think he did, you know. Mate's not the best. No, dominated the F2 feature race, then got obliterated the sprint race. Uh, not at all by me. Um... <laughs> there goes Mulder. A wild Mulder has appeared. Wild Angry Boulder. Oh dear, oh dear. Season 3 flashbacks. Chrissy Good sends in all the maze. And Mulder might the pair of them. KJ is escaped from the lobby. That's not good. And Mulder takes P8. KJ. Ruthlessly. And, all, and KJ has got six seconds back to Mulder, but has just lost out to Clone Troop as well. So Clone Troop now mm. into sixth. KJ down to seventh. And the gap is going to keep being reeled in at the moment by a rate of not so you do get the feeling that Kade is going to be punished for this because there's three cars in this one he could go from sixth before he disconnected down to tenth yeah the, the ai is at 81 so basically you just have to not be like reese norman you'll be fine you'll, be, you'll they'll catch up to him pretty quickly so i don't think there's any i think he'll probably catch up to him pretty quickly uh more the likes of Mulder, Cito, and Amaze. Amaze lost out extremely heavily from this, as um, I think KJ is about to realise that none of us can invite him. Actually, I do know a way, which might be awkward. So. Yeah, I know. Uh, do, do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm about to do? Yeah, you go to this? invite more on the Xbox, invite game, yeah. and then you go on to KJ. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I can anyway, do after that revelation, so Timor yeah. has now brought the gap under four seconds to Dralex in the hunt for P2, that I'm sure he is really hunting him down at the moment. Uh, jolly enough, frequency four seconds back, still maintaining the gap to Felipe. Three second time penalty for Mulder, literally just as soon as he's caught right up to KJ's AI and which kind of hurts a bit because you thought this could have been a really good battle between himself, Clone Trip and Mulder towards the end of the race. But it doesn't know what it's going to be. It looks like as if ruthlessly yeah. Mulder takes P7 away from the Williams. And I must admit, I feel quite bad for him there. I do. I mean, to say he's he, he, earlier on in the season, not like a potential title contender, and then his last few races just ended so badly for him. Uh, I've just been able to, I've just invited him now and sent him another one. Um, in case he can't get 
in case that one has like gone through. But it's a massive shame. And yeah, yeah he's you know, he isn't rejoining. Winner, winner of the Monaco Grand Prix, and you thought maybe this is going to be the season that turns around his his LCR career, but. Only 60 points now, and that's another DNF, and his, well, his championship rival, of course, is out as well, so it's an actual fact, the second week in a row, that LK and KJ, for the battle for fifth, have both DNF'd, and that actually allows the opportunity for DJ Felipe, who's actually going to overtake the pair of them, uh, to get his health into fifth, as it stands, of course, with the 10 points that he will score today, uh, and currently the 12 points Jolly will score, will get him two points closer to him, and also get him six, uh, actually six points behind LK and KJ as well, so... Still, that midfield battle still rages on, but at the front, uh, I fear to say it's going to be 200 points now for Syrah. Uh, and it's going to go even further ahead in the championship because the is down in ninth. And Trilex is in second. Yeah. Uh, with the maze, the maze being as he is right now, down in ninth place, this race is not the best uh, for, for a maze. I think that's the easiest way of putting it. Uh, the gap. As it stands in the championship, currently sat at 72 points. Sarah picked up the victory, so it's 25. Amaze picked up two. It is a 95 point gap from this at this race, which is. Yeah. I think, I think that's kind of. I think I think it just says it all, doesn't it? As Amaze has a goal, Christine Dogshita moves very late. Amaze to the outside, goes swooping around. Will he swap up with the curve? He does not. Straight on the outside goes the mate, and back up in the P8. Gap down 93. Small margins. Thinking of small margins that we're gaining here. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Alfa Romeo of Tibor, who currently walks into this round of the championship, 10 points behind Dralex in third. And currently, by the way it goes, uh, a mate will score 4 points, which means in comparison to Dralex is 18. Uh, he will actually go to 3 points behind his teammates. So Dralex will go up to second. And also as well, 15 points for uh, Tibble will get him that little bit closer as well to Amaze. At the moment, they are 21 points apart. It's 15 points gained for so 19 points. Sorry, 11 points will be gained. Meanwhile, yellow flag and is actually for Boris. He might have lost it. But meanwhile, Tibble on Dralex now coming out towards turn one, down towards two. Bit of a snap at the back end, and that might be the end of this. That's opportunity and nine laps to go. But you get the feeling it might be as soon as next lap he has another go. Certainly so. Um, yeah, so I, I, as it currently stands, you are right. Uh, I was just double checking your maths uh, in my head. Dramix will go second place uh, in front of a maze as it stands. Um, and T Ball will only be two points behind a maze as it stands. I think, roughly. So that means uh, five points between the three drivers? Yes. I'm pretty sure you're right. But that can't be because Tibble will only be just still yeah, 10 well, points behind the girl from the Go work it out while we watch this battle fold. Yeah. Meanwhile, Vivid is coming to the pitch for a set of soft compound ties for the last nine laps. Probably set fastest lap and put himself in the record books, really. But now, around towards the penultimate corner, comes these two drivers Mercedes against Alfa Romeo. It looks to be Mercedes against Renault at the start of this round. Instead, we're being treated to this one at the moment. Out of the final corner, DRS open now for the Alpha. Down towards turn one. Tibor is going to go to the inside as Drellex sort of defends the racing line on the outside. Long way round for Drellex on the defence, but he's very much broke as late as he can to try and hold it. But the second bite of the cherry should be more than enough for Tibor to just get that little bit further ahead. But Drellex might keep his nose in down towards turn two. He's trying to break late, but I think Tibor's tyres just means he's got that little edge on him. And Tibor now into second. 12 seconds behind the race leader, surely too much towards the end of this race, he's going to hunker down and hold on to P2. Yeah, um, I, I've just worked everything out and now I've got to work everything out again. <laughs> Which is really yeah, what we're starting. Yeah, because now there's no position change, yeah. Now there's no position change between these two, so. Yes, T-Belt. Ooh, Dralex loses it. But so what's the just minus three from Tibble's points, yeah. and minus three from Dralex's points. Not that easy. It's good fun in it doing this sometimes. But Dralis now drop 1.2 seconds back now to um, to well, almost immediately. Uh, mm. As it stands, actually, amazed to Dralis now equal on points, both 107. 
Well, that's, that's going to be tasty at Mercedes, isn't it? Well, that, that's going to be an interesting, um, interesting conversation. And T Ball is going to be seven points behind. Seven points separating three drivers. Now, I hate to be that guy, right? Right. But Sarah's got three seconds, yeah? Oh, God! <laughs> well, it'd be revenge for Britain when Sarah will keep off on the last lap, so... No, but this is what I mean, right? Because the gap is 11.3. There's eight laps left to go. Well, seven and a bit, really. But yeah. if it's a second a lap, he would get within near enough three seconds, okay? Roughly, yeah. But he's got to give in a second a lap. But if Sarah gets Stop. a second penalty... That could blow this entire race out. 4.4. 4. 4. If he was to gain a second lap at the moment, it'd be 4.4 4 seconds. 4.2. He is gaining. He'd need about 1.2 a lap. Roughly. About 1.15. Maybe I'm just getting excited for nothing. Maybe I just I want am. something. I'm, I'm, I'm too greedy. <laughs> Put the cake down, damn it. Well, I saved a little bit for it. I don't want it. <laughs> On, of course, the festivity of Easter Sunday, we're wondering where are we going to go next here in LCR. But 10.9 is now the gap. 10.8. Scrap that. 10.8 is the gap between the two. No, nope, uh, 10.9. Nine laps in. It doesn't want to decide. But meanwhile, battle for P6. Mulder has now reeled in Clone Troop. Um, and you do get the villain that after we ruthlessly took KJ's P6 away, uh, P7 away. Uh, clone Troop might be about to get an interesting surprise. Second time penalty for Sira is happening. Oh! <laughs> interesting. Get your calculator out, it might be about to change even more. <laughs> Calculator's still out. It's got my phone. Oh, for. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. oh, I've never been so angry in my life. Oh, God. I've never been so angry on a stream in my life. Oh, the topsy turviness of this just takes the mick. Oh. Meanwhile, Prosciutto's lost it on the exit of the turn three. Um, he's ended up where Daniel Ricciardo hey. did. And Felipe gets another time penalty. I think oh, it's yeah. his first of the day. Um, uh, 2018. <laughs> nope. 17? Yeah, free halo. Remember the reason why? Yeah. No. A wild Max Verstappen. Well, yeah, I remember, no, I know Max Verstappen came together. I thought you asked someone else. I don't quite understand the question. But anyway, simultaneously, Clone Troop is now under the cosh from LCR Mulder, and you wonder. Is the Red Bull going to be able to get past? Now coming out of turn 14, down towards one. DRS wide open. Second bite of the show could be the opportunity, but he couldn't even get it at the first bite of it. Down to one, picks the inside line out. Clone Troop goes a little bit defensive, gives him the push onto the pit stop. Not quite the Schumacher squeeze I'm sure he would have envisioned, but Mulder gets past in the sixth. You have to say, it's been a very tremendous race from the Red Bull. Certainly so. I mean, the meat. Oh! As Ooh, you say that, he did crash. That would have been. I think on the cake thing for this run, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's been a decent race for Mulder. I mean, obviously the medium car strategy seems to have worked very well on the overlap, so he's done very, he's done very, very well. Um, Mace is coming in P8. Interestingly, Matt is actually catching the Mace. So, will Matt be able to get P8 in this race as well? I think. If Matt gets P8, then I'm not getting the calculator back out because I can probably tell you that. 105 for amazed. At that point, Drax will definitely okay. go for second. Um, another far fetched prospect here. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad has scored one point all season, yeah? That came yeah. to Monaco. Matt isn't going to um, be amazed. No, sorry, Brad, not Matt. Yeah, oh, yeah. Brad has scored one point, yeah? yeah. He's 12 seconds behind Prosciutto, who's struggling heard... from wing damage. Yeah. And he's got nine seconds of penalties. Oh. Could and he? what's Brad on? He's on none. Oh. Come Could on, Brad. Get a second point? I mean, I'd love to see it, because don't get me wrong, the thing is, you've got to admit to Brad, 
he shows up every single week, and unfortunately, him and an Apex are at the back. So you have to respect that, that they're still going strong. GC's it's catching him, that's a problem. Season. Oh, God. Oh, GC and that. Apex. Obviously, now Apex has a few penalties. He's got 11 seconds. So... <laughs> Switch to MotoGP, it's a lot less complicated. Oh, food. I like food. It wouldn't be so bad if it was at time penalties everywhere, that's the problem. Right. Well, lap time on regular was 35. Then. Yeah, but have you seen regular? Jesus yes. Christ. The corner cutting would be crazy. Um, hey, we might have a now... different winner every week. Yeah, who, who can who can corner cut the best? Could you imagine Hungary sector two with regular corner cut? <laughs> yes. It'd be straight lined. Just go on five lappers. Oh man, I've had that so much fun. Um, no, it's yeah, for days. Capitaine, Sira, <laughs> and Tim. Stop it, we're trying to commentate here, this is serious <laughs> stuff. Serious job. Um, gap, 10 seconds. Sira's still got two penalties, he's got three laps left to be done, and I fear this is going to be another sira -esque performance, but given the time penalty, it's not exactly been all his way, this Grand Prix. It's, um, yeah, it's been a little bit different from Sira. It's been the... It's, I won't describe it as sloppy, because, well, he's dominating, but it's not been that... Zero finesse almost. I mean, you can argue we got quite lucky. GC nearly rams into the back of Rizzers. You know, he's quite lucky with um, a major situation. As here comes GC, 4P11. Oh, there's a Ferrari. <laughs> no, he chooses Narnia instead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he, went, he went so deep, he ended up back at Britain two weeks ago. Jesus Louise. He went so deep, he ended up back in Austria. No. I'm going to stop myself before I finish. I would. Just to be safe. Yeah. Um, 33 and 35 now for the race leader. 11.2 seconds clear. He's pulled the gap out now, so what do we know? We're just boring, just speculating stuff. Um, you know what? Actually, you know, you know, the, joke is, the joke is politically correct. Right. He went so he went so far. He went back. He went. He went back in time to Austria Hungary with the thing. Yeah, yeah. It's politically correct. We'll, we'll say that. Yeah, we'll say that. It doesn't make sense, but it's politically correct, and that's all I care about. So, obviously, we're at the the point now where we're making up jokes for no moment, reason. No, it's going to be another victory. So we win number seven on the books for for Syria for the season. Um, or is it even win number eight? I don't think Dan's updated this stuff. Yeah, he's uh, win number eight. Win number eight of the season and his career. As GC yeah. actually lost it at turn two, and Syria actually goes through him there. He's actually going to oh. lap the two Ferraris at this rate. Um, That's who are, by the uh, way, the only two cars at eleventh and twelfth. Say. Um, the, these two, one of them is an LCR champion, the other's an LCR runner up. They're just about to be lapped by Sirius, kind of. It kind of breaks your heart season. in a way, doesn't it? In, in his debut season, it is 10th race, and he's set to have his 8th win. Like, I mean, how, how, how dominant was Leopard when he first joined? Oh, Vivid's lost it. Oh dear. When Leopard first joined in season 3, how dominant was he? Was season two? No, it's definitely season three. He must have been fairly dominant. Uh, obviously, this is before my time. My first, this is my start was season four, um, mm. and been a st and been here ever since. But I mean, you look at it. So we've passed the halfway stage now. Round nine sort of ended that halfway stage. Um, I don't know if that was meant, but Brad got lapped by Syra, but then simultaneously, Brad then got passed by Apex. I don't know if that was meant. But anyway, um, so eight wins from ten, okay? So by the way that's going, at the end of the season, he will have 14 wins out of 18. Yeah. That's <clears throat> current form. Yeah. Let me, I think I still have the season three spreadsheet for LCR saved on my thing. Saved on my laptop. I think. Well, we're right up... We'll watch him finish the, the last last lap before we say anything, really. But 
it has been, as per usual, as I always say, really, a, another dominant display to add into the books. And his main championship rivals, one is in third, the other's down in eighth. And, you know, Tibor could make a mount, but ultimately this is looking like a, a very much a one-sided championship fight. In his debut season, the Brazilian has yet again proved that he likes these sort of races and has become accustomed to this on a Sunday. Towards the final corner, from minute one to minute 45, it has been dominant from Sira from lap one to lap 35. Biro Sira wins the Hungarian Grand Prix to make it eight wins from 10. That is a sensational bit of form.